you return, man. Back to MMA, March 4th, Unified MMA 43. The big question is, what got what brought you back in? You know, is it like the mafia? You know, once you, you know, in, you can't get out. <laughs> it's always in my blood, man. It's always I'm I'm always ready to fight. Um, you know, I was supposed to fight on the unified a few years back, and you know, it didn't end up happening. The MMA's been in my blood, it's been in my brain. So I'm like, you know what? It's time to go. Have you been training MMA the whole time, you know, since, you know, you've been boxing for so many years. Has MMA just been part of the regiment or did you just step back in just recently? Yeah, no, no. I've been, I train all the time for everything. You know, um, I'm, I've always been grappling, been throwing the kicks, throwing the elbows, especially, you know, the last two years with, you know, Canada being shut down, you know, it's it gets boring doing one thing. So, you know, I had to, add a few things to the arsenal and you know i'm here march 4th next friday it's time how how was the uh, situation for yourself during all these lockdowns in canada and training were you just at home in your like personal gym in the basement or in the garage what was the situation for you yeah you know at the beginning it was just at home because everything was locked down and whatnot you know i got a bag in the garage you know i got weights and everything to get it done but um also you know i have the gym wolf house as well so you know being a guy that's got the key i could go in there and you know get in the work as well for sure and uh when you look at the the guy that you got up here coming you know what i mean uh dewan pickney you know he's a gritty veteran he has a lot of fights um what are your thoughts on him in the matchup yeah man you know he's he's a seasoned fighter he's got over 30 fights um, you know, he comes to fight and, um, yeah, you know, he looks like he's got a, a decent stand up game, decent wrestling, decent jujitsu. So I, I'm pretty sure he's, he's good all around. Um, man, I'm just looking to get back in there and, you know, bring those fireworks like I used to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you, uh, think about it, you get to put on the, the small gloves again, which, it makes a these huge boxers difference. don't understand <laughs> they don't understand you know that, that's the one thing is uh, for dewan you know he, he's he's gonna get a little bit of the six robberies that i got robbed overseas you know so mm -hmm. he's gonna get a little bit of that uh <laughs> little bit of that um uh enticement on him from you know me being robbed six times these boxers mm -hmm. don't understand you know with the small gloves elbows knees kicks i'm very dangerous when you see guys, you know, like wanting to transition over to boxing and, and almost thinking that it's easy, right? Like some guys in MMA think it's kind of easy. Explain to them how difficult that is, man, to be an <laughs> MMA fighter and then transitioning over to boxing, just pure boxing. Yeah, you, boxing is a totally different game. It's like playing golf and playing hockey, you know? Mm -hmm. um, especially, you know, especially the guys I've been fighting. I've been fighting former world champions, you know, mm -hmm. ranked guys in the world and – you know, they're not just coming from uh, 21 and 2 professional background, you know. They're coming from 250, 300 amateur fights, you know. So, that's the they have the experience on experience on me, you know. The biggest thing with me is when I come to the boxing game is I bring the fight. I like to fight. And I'm used to getting hit with the 4-ounce gloves. Now you give me 10-ounce gloves, it feels like pillows. For real, it, it, I, you know, that's that's a great explanation of, you know, what it probably feels like. I don't know. You know, I didn't box, so I have no idea. I've been hit, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. so I know how it feels to get hit, but, you know. <laughs> well, it, you know, with your experience over the years in, in boxing and training boxing, you know, how will that help you in your return to MMA, you believe? Ah, man, you know, I was already dangerous on the stand-up, you know, without the hands that I have now. Um, I just think it brings my game up to a whole nother level now because now I got some world-class hands, um, and I'm a fighter. I fight, you know, whether it's boxing, whether it's wrestling, MMA, you name it, you know, if it's a fight, this is what I do. I fight, you know, when people ask me, oh, so are you a boxer? And I say, no, man, I'm a fighter. Mm -hmm. I'm a fighter. I'm not a boxer. I'm not a, a Muay Thai practitioner. I'm not a jiu-jitsu guy. I'm just plain, straight up, I'm your fighter. Ring, cage, street, 
If it makes dollars, it makes sense. Did you ever think about going over to that the the bare knuckle stuff? Yeah, you know it's it's that's on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be when I'm retired from everything because I know my hands are going to be hurting after I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but no it is doubt, on the bucket list. That's for yeah. sure. I want to try to get in that triad. Oh yeah, you're right. It's, Small that's club boxing with a little bit of gra with a little bit of uh, wrestling and clinch. You know, I. Mm -hmm. I'll put anybody away in that sport, especially with that triangle ring. They can't run. There's so many opportunities now, man, for, like you said, a fighter, a guy that will step in their cage, ring, whatever, and compete. And it's it's something that when you look at someone like yourself, it's it's just like a, a, a gold mine out there, man, of just competition. Yeah, you know, it's that's the thing is this fighting has become so popular now that they're bringing all types of stuff, all types of stuff, good stuff, crazy stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. I swear, I last uh, last week, um, last week I just saw a fight that they actually had uh, the weekend before I fought my last fight in Poland, mm -hmm. and it was a grandson and his grandfather fighting a girl in MMA. Oh, yeah, I did see Two that. against one. I don't know if you <laughs> saw it, but the grandfather yeah. was like 80-something years old. Didn't he have a bunch of face tats, too? He something? did. This guy was tatted up like, <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, there is a market. What do you think of the slap boxing? That's a, becoming huge in Europe, too. And that the crazy thing, too, about that is a guy died in Poland the weekend before I fought my fight from slap boxing. No, I didn't even hear about that. What? Yeah, man. Like, it's this. You know what? I swear COVID brought it up. Like, so many people got so many ideas mm -hmm. and just put them down on paper, put some money. And I swear, it's, it was this last two years of some crazy stuff has been happening in the fight game. Yeah, you're right. And have you seen the, the phone, booth, phone booth fighting? In Russia. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, all Russia. Russia I'm telling you, hey, Russia loves fighting, man, and I yeah. love Russia. Russia loves fights. They, that's one thing about that country is they, they're there. They want to see fight. And also, uh, you know, you've been around the world, man, and, and visited countries competing in, in combat sports. How has that changed you as a person? You know what I mean? Just being able to be around so many different types of people and nationalities. Yeah, you know, that's... Um, it's a good, it's a good thing. You know, I like who, who would have thought me, me fighting would take me around the world, you know, I've been to places that I've only read in books, you know, like go to Siberia, Russia. I'm like, man, I'm in Siberia, you know, going to Moscow. I always seen it on TV and stuff. And I'm like, man, here I am now, you know, so being able to, Sorry, man. My kids, they got their friends over and they're getting, they're leaving now. <laughs> all good. Yeah, my house is 100 all day long. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, just, uh, you know, visiting different uh, countries, seeing the culture, you know, meeting the people. I love that, man. Like that, mm -hmm. that's one thing that I really love about going away and fighting is there's a lot of pressure that's taken off of you from, you know, being at home, selling tickets, you know, all your friends, all your family. When you go away to fight, it's you, your coach, your cornerman. And it's like, you're going to war. You know, you're going to another part of the country, different, a different country on the other side of the world. And all it is, is take care of business, come back home. Yeah. It's uh, it's a different, like, it's almost like you're going to an, a, you, you're landing in, on a different planet when you go to certain countries that are different, completely different from where you're from, right? It, it almost puts your life in perspective, right? When you go back home. Yeah. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I leave from somewhere that I go, I'm like, man, I'd like to live there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I always any, end up back here. Yeah, for sure. And uh, any, any shocking like encounters, you know, traveling the world i'm pretty sure you've ran into some wild things because i've heard some wild stories from a lot of fighters fighting in europe especially yeah um man like uh what's up what's gone down 
pretty sure there's a few things that have gone down, but it's not on my mind right now. Um, it's, you know, it's different because at the end of the day, when you go to another country to fight, you know, the people there that know that you're a fighter, there's a lot of respect for you and stuff. Yeah. But on the other side of it, you know, obviously me going to Russia to fight their top guy, you know, going to Germany to fight their top guy. You're always coming in as the underdog and you're always went losing on before the fight even starts. You know, so if I got to give it any advice to any fighter that's going away and fighting, finish the fight. Because you ain't winning the decision. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we've seen a lot of examples of that, you know, in the past. So, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, going back to, you know, your fight coming up on March 4th. How has the training camp been going for this? You know, I mean, of course, it's going good. But like, have you decided to like change things up compared to like 2014 when you last fought? Yeah, you know, I, I have switched it up. Man, when I fought last, the last time that I fought, you know, it was uh, the training is the grind, you know, and obviously I'm getting older now. So, you know, the, the biggest thing about the training is, is training smarter, not always harder, you know, and, and listening to your body when it's time to, you know, take those rest and recovery days. Um, when you're 21, there ain't no time to get tired. You know, there is no time for rest. I put in a lot of work during the years. I have over 50 professional pro fights, you know, so for me, being in the gym, working on the skills, the techniques, you know, making sure the cardio is there, the gas is there. And when I get in the cage, then it's time to fight. Mm -hmm. I don't need to do those hard sparring rounds, 5, 10, 15, 20 rounds, you know, with the top killers where most likely you're getting injured after those sessions. You know, now it's train with the proper guys, you know, that push you to that level that you need to take it and fight when you get in the cage. So sparring is something that is not really part of preparation anymore because you've been through the the fire so many times, you you know what it is. But for young guys, would you recommend them to spar more than more than like the veterans do? Oh, bro, don't get me wrong. I, I I'm I'm always down to spar. I bring my gear. If I go to a different city, I always have my gear with me. <laughs> uh, I love to spar. It's just, you know, knowing when to stop. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but yes, 1000% young kids getting into this sport. You need those hard sparring days. Mm -hmm. You need those days in the gym where it mimics a fight. You have to, because if you've never fought before and you never ever spar, in a fight situation, you never know how your body's going to react. You got to always be able to take your body past that threshold to know what your body can take and what it can. So for the young guys coming up in the game, 100%, you need your hard sparring, but also listen to your body. When you don't think that you should train, listen to your mind, sit at home. And the whole thing with fighting is that's I feel like is one of the most important things is being able to get hit without flinching and being scared and, you know, closing your eyes, you know, like what, when did you get over that when you first started training? Yeah. You know, um, that comes with time. Um, I fought when I was a kid all the time, you know, I wasn't the guy who shied away from the monkey bars. Somebody challenged me. I, I liked, I liked to fight. So, um, you know, Getting those sparring rounds in will get you used to not turning away from punches. You know, being able, I tell people all the time, if you don't, the punch you don't see is the one that's going to put you on your ass. Mm -hmm. You always need to see what's coming at you. Cause when you see what's coming at you, you're able to, you're able to, um, uh, see what's coming. You're able to, um, you're able to, you know, embrace the punch or whatnot. It's, you know, the guys, you know, when I'm sparring with guys and stuff and kind of they're kind of looking down, I'm like, man, you don't want to be looking down at the feet because the most time you're looking down at the feet, next time you're going to be looking up at the roof. Mm -hmm. You always got to be watching what the punches that are coming at you because if you don't see, the ones that you don't see are the ones that hurt you. For sure. And 
how do you plan on hurting this guy, man? How do you plan on taking this guy out, you know, in the, at Unified? You know, um, any way that I want. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I ain't being cocky. I'm mm -hmm. confident. You know, I've, you know, I've had 50, 50 plus fights. Um, I know that I've trained hard. And I know when I get in the cage, you know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm going to have fun, but I'm going to get the job done. All right, man. March 4th, Unified MMA 43. Ryan Ford, appreciate the time. All the best, man. Hey, much respect, brother, for having me. Thank you.